ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise him as a wujud for his blessing we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to grant us his pleasure in this worthy life and hereafter Allahumma ameen and ya rabbil alameen we continue with the explanation of the beautiful book of the imam we know ya rabbil alameen and we reach the chapter 26 the bab tahrim al-dhulmi wal-amri bi-rad al-nadhalim the chapter of unlawfulness of oppression and restoring others' rights. Hadith uh, 214. That's Hadith of Abi Umana, Radiallahu Ta'ala An. An Abi Umamata, Ta'ala وحرم عليه الجنة فقال رجل وإن كان شيئا يسيرا يا رسول الله فقال وإن فضيبا من أراض رواه مسلم أبو أمام رضي الله تعالى عنه he narrates and says the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Allah سبحانه وتعالى decrees the hellfire and debars Jannah make haram Jannah for the one who usurps and takes the rights of a believer by taking a false oath or with his right hand. One man asked, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, even if it should be for an, an insignificant thing, nothing. He said, even if it be a stick of the Iraq tree, the tree of Siwa, even that stick of the Iraq tree, which is insignificant in the sight of the people, from the miswak sticks are taken? Yes, it is that. This hadith is reported in Sahih Muslim. So here we have the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith which is narrated by uh, Iyas ibn Tha'laba, or Abu Mama, his kunya, al harith al Ansari. He's Sahabi of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have not heard much his uh, name, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not for much time, as the reports say that he stushida uh, fi Uhud. Allah knows best, he became a shaheed or a martyr in the battle of Uhud. As they say, some they say some uh, other battle, so some else elsewhere. But he did not accompany the Prophet so much time. Uh, he, and actually, that's why he, he narrated for the Prophet only three hadith. Only three hadith. And some they mentioned two. And one of them is the hadith which we just uh, mentioned. And that is in Sahih Muslim. In this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he says, Man Muslim in Whoever observes takes any haqq, any right of a Muslim with his right hand, yameen. Yameen in Arabic language is the right hand. Yameen in Arabic language is the oath too. I take an oath. Why it's called the oath yameen? Because normally a person takes it with the right hand. I swear. So that's or even the deals with his right hand. And so what is it meant here? The yameen usually the person does it with his right hand. Even the deals with the deals and every, everything he does with his right hand. So here the Prophet said, He took it without without right. Then he mentioned the word min Muslim. Min Muslim from a Muslim. And then he mentioned uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this is in general. Meaning, he mentioned that, he didn't mention that. He mentioned haq, he didn't mention wealth. He mentioned right. So that right can be include wealth, can be inclu in include some something physical, something spiritual, some can be include the honor of the believer or the honor of the other person. Anything that the person 
he transgresses against that that person uh, that is included in it. So that's why he mentioned any right. And that right can be taken away from the other person. Mukasharatani, and it directly he just violate his right and takes and grabs and takes his right. Doesn't matter, be that wealth or be whatever we say, hitting him, whatever, takes directly or indirectly in different ways. So this is the words of the Prophet are general to generalize of any type of haq and right is taken from a Muslim in the in this case and uh, anything. Even the word Muslim in here, it is not meant to be uh, only as a Muslim. And only a Muslim. No. The hadith is general. It's meant normally because in the Muslim society, but it, uh, it is even for the non-Muslims. So that's what the scholars have said. So for example, a person nowadays, give an example, the Sheikh gives examples, that could be done, for example, taking wealth from the Muslim, even from your own children or from your own wife, writing down or suppressing her and trying or making in a different way, not to take it, but to say, to make it her right and sign something which is not uh, with the free will to leave some part of a matter, for example. And she doesn't want that. You just make her sign or somebody else or to take the rights of your sisters from the Mirah inheritance or anything and then make them sign without their consent, but they are forced to sign. So it is taken, it's considered there entering in this hadith as taken without help. any type of, of uh, rights, be those spiritual, physical, uh, that any anything that has to do with the rights in Islam. And he said that with Yemin, because nor with his right hand, because normally this is how it is taken. But what about if a person takes a right of somebody without half, without right, with, with his tongue? And he blames him, accuses him, or he uh, slanders him, and he says bad words about that person. Is that included in the hadith? Yes, it is included. Everything that is taken unjustly from uh, a person, as we said, is not only Muslim, but it is all from the three categories of non-Muslims. What? Who are non-Muslims? We have four categories of non-Muslims. Number one is al-muahid. Muahid, the one who, with a Muslim country, for example, Muslims they have a truce, peace. They can go and yeah, yeah, any anywhere, so they can visit one another. No problem. There is no. They are not in a state of war. So this is included in it in the hadith. Number two is a dhimmi. Dhimmi is the, the person who lives under the Islamic rule in the Muslim country. So that is including him. His life, his uh, properties are, are unviolated. Then number three is a musta'man. A musta'man is that you have a short or temporary uh, uh, truce or peace. That it's not like Mu'ahad always, for example. Like a musta'man, he, he has a man. He has entered your own country, Muslim country, and he has a man, you are not a state of war. So this is included in the hadith. The one who is not included is the one who you are in state of war with. Obviously, you are in state of war, so that's not included in that hadith. al harbi is called in the Arabic language in a state of war. So even though the Prophet said it for the Muslim, but this includes even non-Muslim because their, their uh, right and their haq is, is protected by the Sharia and protected by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Prophet said that whoever does so and does this thing, Allah will make will make uh, hellfire for him and paradise will be haram for him. Can be that said about from a Muslim. A Muslim, a Muslim, we know that the Muslim, if he dies as a Muslim, even if he has committed sins, Inshallah ta'ala, it will end in Jannah. So the hadith, this is hadith, and Allah knows best. This is considered from Nusus al Wa'id. We have Wa'id and Wa'id. Wa'id is a promise. Allah Azza wa has promised the believers for Jannah, for example, and to forgive their sins. Wa'id is Allah Azza wa Jal has warned people for a punishment. So al Wa'id 
the promise of Allah is true. It's going to happen. لا محال. It's going to happen. There is no way it's not going to happen. The wa'id that Allah Azza wa Jal has promised or warned his servants, people, with a punishment that may or may not happen for different reasons. Maybe Allah Azza forgives the person. He's in his hands. He said, no, he has done this, he has done that. So how can you forgive? No, it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it might be here, that's, uh, for example, Imam Ahmed, he said, we have to take this hadith at his, uh, like, a face value. What it, whatever it is saying, we have to take that hadith, khalas. But then we have, might have, like, a, miss, some people miss, may might misunderstand. So how can a, a Muslim can and the, the Jannah can be haram for him and enter hellfire. As we know, as a believer, even if he commits all of the sins, inshallah, uh, unless he commits shirk and he doesn't repent, uh, then he, inshallah, will end up in Jannah, even after a long period of time. So how can that be? So that's why the most correct thing is that this from the Nusus al wa'id as I said, in the text of the warning from Allah Azza wa Jal for a punishment that might happen, might not happen. It is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani Allah, you deserve, we said that you, that person deserves, for example, to enter the hellfire because of that sin, but Allah knows he might not punish him. Might have something else. For example, Allah Azza wa we understand that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be, he, this person, Allah, he, he puts him into trial with a lot of, a lot of masaid and calamities. And those calamities, you to wipe away this sin. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the, has uh, predicted for, for him and has made in his qadr that you will have a lot of hasanat. So in the hasanati, you did the sayyad, the good deeds, you will wipe away the bad deeds. Or Allah Azza wa Jal will has written for this person, even if he does so, that Allah will put him under the shafa of the Prophet or the intercession of some somebody else, the martyrs or somebody else, even Allah subhanahu will take him from the hellfire, for example. Or Allah has written for this person to repent for this sin. So different possibilities that that doesn't mean that this person, if he's a Muslim, he will not stay forever in Jahannam. And he will be in the law if he dies as a Muslim, he will end, inshallah ta'ala, in Jannah, in, in, in paradise. ثم لا أنه تحرم عليه الجنة تجب له النار حتى يستوفى ذلك الحق من أور another meaning for example that the paradise is haram for him or a nar is deserving for him to be put into a fire until he returns back the right this is another interpretation for example until he returns back the the, the right he deserves that. But when he turns back to the right, Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jalla forgive him. And uh, so, need to be understood that because some people, they might misunderstand this hadith and say, a Muslim, he commits the sin or kabira, like the khawarij. They misunderstood a hadith like this, and they said, whoever commits a kabira, major sin, then he will be in hellfire. Muslim will never be in the hellfire for main, minor or major sins, except he committed shirk and didn't repent. Okay. Otherwise, be in at the end, the believer, Muslim, you will end Jannah, inshallah, with the, with the mercy of Allah. Subhan and he might end even in the beginning. Allah Azza wa might forgive him because, as we said, different reasons that he has good deeds and, and any other thing. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, when he said that, Man iftata haqqa bin Muslim. Any haqq. Any right, any right that he took unjustly and violently. Or even not violent, he took unjustly there from that person. And the Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they he wanted to understand better. So he said, Yeah, ya Rasulullah, yani even if it's something which we consider invalid or, or in, in, insignificant, it's not nothing, it's not a big deal. We say it's not a big deal. A word I said, it's not a big deal. Wait, just one penny or one dollar, what's up, something. The Prophet said, وَإِنْ قَضِيبًا مِنْ أَرَاكْ Even if it is just a stick, the tooth, the, the miswak that we use. Oh, how much is miswak worth? In Saudi Arabia, two, three reals. Now, like 60 cents. Here, a little bit more. But it's it's not like some something that is valuable in our lives. 
But the Prophet wants to give the, the example that even if it is that, so the matter is grave and dangerous and is very delicate. You have to fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to give the rights to its people and not violate the rights of the people, be that their honor, be that their, their, their body, be that their, their wealth or anything or slandering, you should stay away from that, inshallah ta'ala. I think we can stop here. Was it late or continue another hadith? Let's ask for the question. So stop here because we get, get to uh, and we can stop here in a second. Alhamdulillah, we, 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 we will get something better than nothing. The people have become sleepy. And alhamdulillah, as le we learned uh, the lesson from the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala. So we stop here, inshallah. We continue next week. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his pleasure in the dunya hereafter. And may Allah Azza protect us and all the Muslims from the Buddha that we to uh to, to not be done to us and not to be doing to others. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma anja ibadaka al-mustada akina fi ghazza wa filistina fi sudan wa fi kulli makana min kari sudud kareem. Allahumma anjihim ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma kun lahum wa la takun alayhim mansurhum wa la tansur alayhim. Allahumma arhamu taahum wa taqabbal shuadahum wa da'u jirhahum wa atin ja'ahum ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma ya rabbal alameen ya dhal jalal wa ikram. اللهم كن لهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم عليك بأعدائهم عليك بأعدائهم الصهاينة الظالمين والمنافقين عليك بهم فإنهم لا يجزونك اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر واجعلهم عبرة لمن يعتبر اللهم لا تحقق لهم غاية ولا ترفع لهم غاية يا رب الجلال والإكرام يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين صلى الله على نبينا محمد الأصف يا جمعين سبحانك الله محمدك أشهد لا لا أنت مصطرك أنت زوجك أنت